welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Sammy and I'm an illustrator and I have been on a bit of a hiatus over the holidays, moving and things like that. We are now in Washington state and I am loving it. Super excited. I'm just kind of getting settled in for a while and yeah, we can see the water from our house, which is amazing. So I'm really excited to show you guys um, some of the things that we've been seeing and the things that we will see. Um, but today I wanted to talk about drawing animal characters. And <clears throat> this idea came to me because obviously it's something I do a lot, but because I've been doing it for a few years, I find that I kind of get lazy about it and I forget to reference photos and kind of like reteach myself because um, even if you know how to draw something over time, if you never really like look back at photos of that animal, you might start drawing things wrong in an unintentional way. So of course, once you know how to draw something accurately, then you can choose ways to stylize it and stuff. But um, I was finding that a lot of my animals were just becoming like these meat tubes. <laughs> and it's kind of maybe because um, I, you know, started drawing a lot of rabbits from the beginning. And so I think I kind of gave everything that shape of body and the pose of the feet and hands and things like that. And um, of course you had to take some liberties when anthropomorphizing an animal, making it more like human-like because, you know, maybe they can't hold a mug or whatever it is that you need them to be doing. Um, but, so I thought that I wanted to give myself the challenge of not only um, redrawing one of my illustrations, but also doing a new one. And to start, I did some studies of um, different animal poses and things like that. It's one thing that I've noticed, like a lot of people compare my work to Beatrix Potter, which is really nice. Um, but about her work, um, another contemporary artist, Chris Dunn, his animal characters mostly um, just have, there's just like, they have a little something to them that I think mine haven't been having. And it's not so much about style, I think, it's more about getting the body to look like that animal. Um, for example, you know, a mouse. So that's one of the illustrations I did, um, is a mouse and I'll show it to you. But something I noticed about them was that their, you know, their feet are different than a rabbit's and sometimes they're skinnier and they have longer little toes. And there's some kind of funny and some things that are kind of maybe creepy or not like, you know, cute, um, about different animals that if you can include that in your animal character, or you know, choose to exaggerate it even, if you wanna go for a more stylized look, you might get a more interesting result rather than having every single thing have basically the same body or drawing what you think they look like. So I'm gonna show you guys um, this mouse illustration and um, you'll see my first sketches. Actually, let me show you now. Okay, I'll just excuse all the paint on my table, but this was the first sketch I did when I was thinking I wanted to make the mouse look a little bit more um, accurate in terms of the way its body is. And so I was trying to like, you know, put the feet up a little bit more rather than just being completely flat, like give it a little bit more of a leg, but it just was not looking right. So then I referenced some photos and did these sketches of actual mice um, and that was so helpful even just doing this for like five or ten minutes um, I think really really helped me as I progressed to doing the final mouse now I want to compare this to um, a mouse character I've done in the past and then I will insert the um, the time lapse of doing the finished mouse when I say that I've started to kind of draw the bodies the same. So this is um, really the only mouse character I've done in the past. I still really love it. Um, and I love the colors I use and you know, his outfit and everything. Um, but if you see like his body 
his feet, his arms, everything minus like the ears and the tail are basically the same as my rabbits. And I think the rabbit is pretty good. I think that maybe I could get better with like their arms and stuff. Um, this is a pretty old drawing actually, but anyway, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys what I mean by showing that, you know, their bodies really shouldn't be like this. So let me show you. Um, he's not really supposed to be like a wild rabbit. He's supposed to be more of like a Netherland dwarf um, house rabbit. So here's an example of what that would look like. And of course, you know, if it's on its hind legs, it's gonna look different. Um, but let's see. So you see this bunny standing up um, and they pretty much do have like a tube body. That's so cute. Um, so yeah, so you know when drawing that, that's pretty, you know, pretty good choice. Um, but if you look at mice, of course there's not many photos of them standing up, but their bodies are just very different than a rabbit's. Um, and their feet are different, their hands are different, they're not so heavily furred, they have longer toes. Um, yeah, so we can just compare that to the drawing I did here, and it's not so bad, but obviously I do have the hands and mittens and the feet and shoes, so I might have made a different choice if I didn't do that. Maybe it would look more mouse-like, but I do think that there are some of these characteristics that um, you can choose to kind of accentuate and focus on to make your characters look just a little bit more full of personality um, and you know pick out what's unique about the animal that they are. I wanted to do a mouse character again um, but he was gonna be a little bit different, different you know individual, different person um, and I wanted him to be a deer mouse and they're so cute. One thing that I noticed that was majorly wrong about what I did before, um, or you know, I guess you could say it was just an artistic choice, but the thing was that it wasn't really an intentional choice, it was more just I wasn't paying attention, is that when a real mouse is like standing up, so let's just ignore that this is for pest control. <laughs> um, when a real mouse is standing up, they have hunched little backs. Um, they're not just a complete tube. And also like their feet are just like a little bit more visible. And so it really helped when I did my sketches, which you'll see, but just to give us an idea, obviously all four of his feet are on the ground, but you can see how having the arch in the back and everything might be beneficial. And I'll show you that later. Um, you'll see that and I think it'll make more sense when you see the drawing I did. But um, the other thing I did was I just recently did a chipmunk illustration that was going to be in my new shop release um, of new prints. And after, for one thing, I discovered new brushes on Photoshop. And so after I did that, I wanted to do something more detailed. And um, just because I haven't done anything detailed in a long time and I thought it'd be fun to try a character that way. So I started looking at chipmunk photos and I noticed that they have the similar kind of arch in their back. Um, even this one whose front feet are on the ground, he's pretty arched. <laughs> this one has a little bit of a curve. So, um, you know, that's just another thing that separates them from looking like how a rabbit would. When a rabbit stands up straight, it's pretty vertical um, back if it's fully upright. Um, so anyway, just some things to notice and think about. Their little hands and everything, very like long pointy nose. So now um, I will go ahead and show you guys what I did. I'm gonna start with the mouse and then I'll show you the chipmunks. Okay, so this is me doing um, my illustration of the mouse. I started out with those sketches just kind of for my head, um, and then I moved on to sketching from photos, which is what you see here. And you can see the mouse is just in a little bit more of a naturalistic pose. So then I had to translate that into this character I wanted to make. His name is Professor Thistle, and yeah, um, so 
once I kind of got him looking how I wanted, I made sure that like I, I kept the nose nice and long, the feet, um, the funny way that they are. I went in and I did the line work, um, the black lines, because I think that that's one thing that even if I choose to do the fur and things like that more realistic, I can keep it um, looking like mine by the line quality, um, the way the line is. So I was really excited to discover a new brush on Procreate. Um, it's one of the ink ones. I can't remember what it's called right now. Um, but yeah, so I went in and I did that and then I filled in with all of the little fur bits and shading and things like that. I chose to make the face the most detailed part of the picture. Um, sometimes you'll see that in like old portraits that the face is um, the most detailed and then things kind of get a little bit more loose or painterly the further away from the face you get. So um, it kind of happened naturally, but I also decided that that's what I wanted it to be like. Okay, so this is the first chipmunk I had done, and this was before I had the thought about, you know, making sure I knew what it looked like and everything, um, doing its body a certain way. So I knew that I wanted to have this little chipmunk character with some, like, Chinese carryout. Um, my market scene illustration, um, there's a video of that from like over a year ago, but it's in my shop. Um, there are some chipmunks really tiny and they're buying Chinese takeout and I thought it would be kind of fun to take one of those characters and focus on it. So this was the first illustration I did of the chipmunk. Um, again, I don't think there's anything, you know, very bad about it. It's just that I realized it had the same <laughs> meat tube body. Um, after I did it, I just was feeling like it could be better and I decided to go in and redo it. And I actually ended up coming up with a few new ideas for him. So when I started to redo it, I did the same thing again and I went in to procreate on a new document and I started sketching chipmunks from reference photos. And one thing to keep in mind, if you do reference a photo for your drawing, is to make sure that you change it enough that if someone searches it on Google, they're not gonna be like, oh, that's the exact photo that they used. Um, there've been many times when, I mean, especially when the animal doesn't have clothes on that I've seen someone's work and I know what photo they use. I can like recognize it. It's even happened with art I've seen at Anthropology. <laughs> and they're just referencing Google Photos. So be careful about that. Just make sure that you, you know, change it enough, change a little bit of the pose or something um, to make it not so exact. So for example, for this one, I kind of moved the tail around and then I'm gonna be adding clothes and stuff on. Um, that's gonna kind of set it apart from the photo that I initially referenced. Also, um, something I was taught in school was that if you are referencing a photo um, of an animal or a person or anything, to make sure that it's not of the animal doing something like highly unusual. Um, so, you know, because that obviously is going to be more recognizable, but not only that, it's something that that photographer would have, you know, probably worked fairly hard to get um, and to capture. It's not merely a portrait of that animal. 
Um, I also changed the position of the hands and things here. Um, and again, I kind of went more simple with the way that I colored in the clothing and I focused on the fur on the face as the most detailed part of it. Kind of imagining this chipmunk um, going home, scurrying through the forest with his Chinese takeout and it's raining and he's got his little rain jacket on and you'll see um, soon that I was kind of inspired to add a little something else. Um, that's just another element that like reminds you that he's really an animal. Um, and that is, I wonder how soon I'll draw it in this time lapse. Um, that is a little leaf umbrella. So you'll see that soon. <laughs> water droplets on his jacket and testing out different leaf styles and designs. It really took me a long time to get the leaf texture and lighting to make sense for a rainy environment but also go well with the style I was working in. Um, <clears throat> so the raindrops which I add on him and on the leaf I think just kind of make him seem even more real. I mean, it's not that they're so realistic. They're actually really simple strokes to make those. Um, I think I looked up a YouTube tutorial once on how to draw droplets. Um, but I put the rain around him and some shadow on his face so that the whole thing just kind of comes together and yeah, makes him look more like he's existing in real life. Okay, so now you can see the difference between the two. <clears throat> Obviously, they're very different. I did do the one on the right a few years ago, so things have changed, but even just changing the body shape, if I had colored it the same way as the other one, I think it would look a lot better, um, in my opinion. And here are the chipmunks, which were done the same day, <laughs> the same two days as each other, and there's a big difference. So. Yeah, um, comment below, let me know what you think. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, basically, what I hope you take away from this is that it's always good to practice and to kind of go back to the basics of something because you might discover something new um, about your style, something new that you would like to start incorporating, um, or just ways to make your animals have a little bit more of their wild <laughs> essence, um, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, and you know, if you wanna draw something that looks completely not like the animal, <laughs> you can. Um, just for my personal preference, I have been thinking that I want to make my animals look a little bit more naturalistic. So if you have that kind of goal in mind, or if you want to try to just challenge yourself to do something new, I hope this was fun and helpful. And um, if you're not an artist, I hope you enjoyed this just for seeing my process. Um, I am going to be having limited edition prints of these illustrations. Um, I'm going to be working with a company that prints them on cotton paper. It's archival quality. They're signed and numbered. Um, it's a digital signature, but still it's mine. And um, yeah, so that's gonna be really exciting. 
Uh, hopefully I'll have those available when this video uploads. I'll link that below if they are. I'm also going to link below any of the like um, <coughs> artists I talked about um, or the the books that I should, like flipped through. I will link those below in case you're interested in getting one of those books. I'm not affiliated with anything here. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was inspiring and I hope you have a great day. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this. You can also join me on Patreon. I am working on a um, digital download illustration just for my patrons. It's kind of a special milestone um, gift. So yeah, you can join over there and Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Um, thank you to my patrons. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye.